Hey, what's up, mortals? It is I, the Silent Sheepdog, here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 11 of What If Deku Had the System. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying, sit back, relax, you're in for a treat. And so, we begin. Time passed without much else happening. The students had been given a few days off to recover after the sports festival, and those few days were needed for some. Izuku used these days to plan and organize things with Stain. While their partnership had mostly been determined, there were a few things that needed to be planned more carefully. For instance, if Stain was ever seen with the soldiers, it could lead to either Nezu or Aizawa finding out. If that ever happened, they would be horribly compromised. The teacher presented another issue. Izuku was still supposed to help them with locating Stain, and they will ask for results. Not only that, but with the amount of casualties that are piling up, they would definitely want something to work with. Izuku knew that this would be brought up when he returned to school, so he needed to prepare an answer. He could use this to his advantage, and he could lead the heroes astray while keeping Stain out of harm's way. He would need to be very subtle, so that he wouldn't raise any suspicion, but he was sure that it could be done. It didn't take long before the Greenette had to return to school, and he felt that he was prepared for the worst. He quickly made his way to the classroom, finding that most of his classmates were already there. They were all chatting, and Izuku was dragged into it eventually. There was one, however, that was awfully silent. This was Ida, and Izuku had an idea of why that was. Ida must have heard what had happened to his older brother, and he must have been very affected by it. Izuku considered talking to the blue-haired teen, but quickly decided against it. Maybe he could say something to comfort Ida, but he could easily risk selling himself out. Midoriya, a voice then called out. Izuku was brought back to attention as he turned to see that it was Todoroki. The bicolored teen looked just as cold as always as he approached the green-haired boy. Izuku sighed, expecting Todoroki to come with another declaration of war as he said, Yes, Todoroki? With a calm voice. Todoroki stopped in front of him and was silent for a short while until he said, I owe you an apology. Now Izuku was confused, for this was nowhere near anything he had imagined. He thought that Todoroki was still mad about what had happened during the festival, but it turns out that he was feeling sorry. The bicolored teen looked a little pained, as if he didn't know how to relay what he wanted to say, until he sighed before speaking. You, you were right. I tried to use you to get back at my father. Not only that, but I said some things that I shouldn't have. I insulted you, and for that, I apologize. He said, his voice being rather weighed down by what seemed to be guilt. Izuku was honestly surprised, for he hadn't expected this. It did bring a smile to his face, however, for it did show that Todoroki wanted to change. On this note, the Greenette extended his hand forward while saying, Apology accepted. Let's start over. With a more cheerful tone. Todoroki was caught off guard by this, but he quickly gathered himself as he shook Izuku's hand. Their classmates seemed to be put at ease by this, for it meant that most conflicts between them had been settled. They were going to comment about it if they hadn't been interrupted when Aizawa entered the classroom. Good morning, class, the tired teacher said, prompting everyone to take their seats. Aizawa scanned the quiet classroom as he walked up to the podium and began to speak. He started by explaining that they would be having internships, and some of them had received offers from various pro heroes. He then told them that they would intern regardless if they had received any offers or not. After that, he showed a ranking of the offers that each student had received, with Todoroki at first, Bakugo in second, and Izuku in third. The students were a little surprised by this, but to them it was understandable. Despite how powerful Izuku was, he did forfeit his match against Todoroki. Next up was a rather fun exercise, which consisted of them picking their hero names. The students all got excited by this as Midnight entered to help them. The students all went to work, enjoying every second of this. All except for Izuku. The green-haired boy currently lacked any interest in picking a hero name, and was quick to announce it when he went first out of everyone. They were all surprised by this, even Midnight, but when Izuku told them his reason, they decided to just leave it at that. 
There was an obvious choice for Izuku's hero name, the Shadow Monarch, but this would probably cause more problems than anything. Not addressing that it's an odd name, it could be recognized by others. More specifically, the Monarch of Destruction. Izuku was about to head back to his seat until he was stopped by Aizawa. Midoriya, can you come with me for a second? The tired teacher said. The students were all confused by this, but Izuku already knew what this was about. He followed his teacher out of the classroom, all the way to the principal's office. Upon entering, he was met with a familiar face of Nezu, but there was one that he didn't recognize. It was an old man that wore a yellow costume, as if he was a hero. Izuku didn't know what to make of this man, but he didn't get to fully analyze him until Nezu greeted him. Midoriya, please take a seat. The mouse said, his voice being its usual joyous tone. Izuku did as his principal told him as he asked. Sir, may I ask who this is? While looking towards the old man. Nezu seemed to be unaffected by this, but he didn't say anything before the old man himself spoke. I'm Gran Torino, and you're Izuku Midoriya if I'm not mistaken, he said, while reaching out his hand towards the greenette. Izuku was still a little confused, for he didn't recognize who the man was, but he shook his hand nonetheless. Gran Torino used to be a teacher here at UA. He's also All Might's mentor. He went into retirement a while ago, but he's come here to offer you an internship. Nezu then said, his voice remaining the same as it had before. This made Izuku a little curious. Nezu must have been aware of the many offers he had received, which meant that Gran Torino's must be very special. That could be explained by the fact that he was All Might's mentor, but if that were the case, why wasn't All Might there to inform him about it? The retired hero was unaffected by these words, as he said, None taken. I understand your doubt. I'm an old man, and I don't look that impressive. You'd be justified in doubting me. With a calm voice, Izuku shook his head at this as he responded by saying, No, I'm not doubting your abilities at all. It, it's just that you taught All Might. I have nothing against him, but I don't exactly plan on being like him. While sounding like he was trying to clear things up. Gran Torino was a little shocked to hear this, but that quickly turned into a grin. Izuku was a little confused by this, for it looked like the old hero had realized something. He didn't get to think of it, however, before Nezu spoke up again. I did not bring you here because of who Gran Torino used to teach. It's something else. I've discussed it with him, and he's agreed to help us search for the hero killer, and he's been made aware of your circumstances, and therefore is here to offer you an internship. You told him what? Izuku then shouted, cutting the principal off mid-sentence. The room fell silent now for this reaction had come out of nowhere. Izuku had been listening calmly up until now, but something had set him off. The greenette was silent for a while, as if he was thinking. Then his face turned into one of anger, as he stood up and said, You bastard! You told him my secret, didn't you? With a voice that was filled with rage, Nezu shook a little upon hearing this, not saying anything for a moment. That's when Izuku turned to see Gran Torino's expression, and it was just what he had expected. The old hero was also a little shook from the sudden burst of rage, but his face told him everything. Gran Torino knew about the Shadow Soldiers, and there were only so many that could have told him about it. This is when Izuku turned his eyes back to Nezu, who cleared his throat before saying, <clears throat> Midoriya, I understand that you're upset, but you have to realize that this was necessary. While trying to calm himself down, Izuku only got more infuriated upon hearing this as he said, Like hell it was necessary! You didn't even consult with me before doing it! With a similar fury in his voice. Nezu tried to retort to this, but was once again interrupted when Izuku said, Silence, you rat! I don't want to hear another word from you! You're pushing buttons here, and if you continue to do so, let's just say I might do something that I'll regret. With a more quiet, yet still fiery tone. Both Nezu and Aizawa wanted to say something in response to this, but they couldn't. The hateful aura that Izuku was emitting almost choked them, preventing them from doing anything. They couldn't believe that the boy was capable of radiating such animosity, but it just happened. So they were just silent as Izuku left the room, slamming the door behind him. The office had been left in silence which was a stark contrast to what was happening within Izuku. 
The greenette may have shown that he was angry, but it really didn't do justice to how he was actually feeling. He was so overwhelmingly frustrated that there was almost nothing stopping him from becoming violent. There was a reason that he had left the room when he did. Had he stayed any longer, he would have lashed out. Hey, kid. An old voice then called out, knocking Izuku out of his thoughts. He turned toward it, only to see that it was Gran Torino. The old man had followed him into the halls, and it seemed like he wanted to say something. Are you okay? He asked, with a normal tone. Izuku took a deep breath, forcing himself to calm down as he answered. I will be, he said, trying to sound as calm as possible. The retired hero could tell that Izuku was still angry, and he couldn't blame him for it. His teachers, the people he thought he could trust, had betrayed him. He had all the right to be this angry. I won't ask you to forgive them, but I understand what you're feeling. Believe it or not, I'm just as infuriated as you are right now. Gran Torino then said, with a voice that was the same as before. Izuku was a little curious upon hearing this as the old man continued. Those two already made it obvious, but I know about your whole shadow deal. Your secret is safe with me. I owe you that much for keeping the big guy secret. These words confused Izuku at first, but he figured them out rather quickly. It was the part that mentioned the big guy that confused him, but he soon realized that he was referring to All Might. If that was the case, then there was only so much he could be talking about. Izuku chuckled a little before he said, <laughs> I figured you knew about that. You wouldn't be much of a mentor if you didn't, with a much calmer voice. Gran Torino smiled at this, glad that Izuku managed to finally calm down, as he said, Look, those two idiots might have ruined the moment, but my offer is still on the table. From what I've heard, you're both strong and competent. Therefore, we can focus on catching the hero killer, or just patrolling, with the same calm voice. Izuku was a little surprised to hear this, but he did like it. This way, he could focus on keeping Stain off the radar, and he wouldn't have to be as secretive about it. Upon making this thought, the Greenette pulled out a pen and paper from his pocket. Gran Torino was a little confused as he watched the boy write something on it. He was about to ask about it until the boy handed it over to him while saying, Could you pass this on to the principal? I'd rather not see him, if it could be helped. With the same calm voice, the hero was even more confused now, as he accepted the paper and had a look. That's when he realized that it wasn't just a piece of paper, it was a fully signed form for an internship with himself. The old hero smiled upon seeing this, as he then said, <laughs> I'll see you around then, kid, before walking back to the principal's office. Izuku smiled at this, being content despite his prior frustration as he walked back to his classroom. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Staying safe online is an ever-growing difficulty, and hackers could exploit you. NordVPN allows you to change your IP address, making you harder to track, securing your privacy. In addition to providing you with safe passage through the web, you can also expand the reach of your favorite streaming services. Are you tired of going through two, three, or even four streaming services to watch your favorite anime? Well, with NordVPN, you can change your country and be able to bend shows like My Hero Academia, Naruto, and many others on your favorite streaming services with just the press of a button. Check out the link in the description to get 72% off when buying for two years, $3.29 a month. This deal is for a limited time. Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. A few days passed and it was finally time for the internships to begin. Izuku tried to talk to Ida before leaving, but that didn't go anywhere, unfortunately. The blue-haired boy had claimed that everything was fine, but Izuku knew that it wasn't. That is why he decided to try and keep an eye on Ida to make sure that he wouldn't interfere in any way. Izuku and Gran Torino did as they said they were going to do. They spent most of their time patrolling and searching. Even though they were getting awfully close to finding him, Izuku made sure that they wouldn't. While this was happening, the man they were looking for was having a peculiar encounter with someone he didn't recognize. He had his guard raised at all times, but he knew that he would be fine. The soldiers within his shadow would make sure of that. Stain tread through the mass of dark mist fearlessly, noting how it had taken him far away from the rooftop he had been standing on. 
he found himself in a bar face to face with a man that was covered in numerous places with pale hands. After that came a round of introductions, as well as an explanation to why he had been brought there in the first place. What Stain had learned from this was that the individuals in front of him, Kurogiri and Tomura Shigaraki, called themselves the League of Villains, which rang numerous bells in his head. He had heard of them before. His new ally had warned him about these villains specifically. He had claimed that these villains attacked Yue, and that they were more than likely associated with a powerful individual. Other than that, there wasn't much he had to fear. According to his allies' words, their leader wasn't as smart as he thinks he is. I see. You're the ones that caused trouble at Yue. Isn't that a little reckless, even for you? The hero killer then exclaimed, sounding quite stoic despite what he had said. Shigaraki was, of course, annoyed upon hearing this, but he was also intrigued, so he responded by saying, I never told you we attacked Yue. Where did you learn that? While showing how confused he was, Stain was unmoved by this as he simply responded by saying, I have friends in high places. They told me a lot about you. Among many things, they told me to stay clear of you, but I'm willing to at least hear you out. Why have you brought me here? And what do you hope to accomplish? With a more demanding voice this time, Shiragaki did get a little more annoyed by Stain's tone, but he managed to calm himself before saying, I want you to join our ranks. You're a villain just like us, so you'll fit right in. As for what I want to accomplish, I want to kill All Might. <laughs> I want to destroy the things that piss me off. This society praises someone like him with his usual sadistic tone. Stain shook a little upon hearing this, for yet realized his mistake. This man was nothing like him, clearly, and he was a waste of his time. The hero killer looked to his shadow, assuring himself that it wasn't empty, before turning his back and saying, It would seem that I should have listened to my friend after all. You and I agree on one thing, this society needs to fall. But that's the only thing we agree upon. You lack any form of conviction, so all your efforts are pointless as a result. With the same stoic voice as before. Shigaraki was infuriated upon hearing this, and he could no longer contain himself. The hand-covered villain charged at Stain, who had his back still turned towards him. This only served to infuriate Shigaraki even more, as he slowly closed in on the man only to be stopped. Suddenly, he was pushed to the ground before he was penned down. Shigaraki didn't know what had happened, for he hadn't even seen it, until he looked up and it became clear to him, and it filled him with both shock and anger. Over him was a knight-like figure, clad in a pitch-black darkness. It was familiar to him, not just because it reminded him of Kurugiri, but he had actually seen things like this before. It was just like the shadow soldiers that had foiled his plans at the USJ, the ones that were led by that green-haired brat. As you clearly can see, I'm already allied with someone far greater than you. He too agrees that society needs to be broken, but he differs from you greatly. His focus isn't on destroying the world. He wants to rebuild it. With all that said, do you really think I would risk compromising my relations with him for the likes of you? Stain then said, his voice and eyes being far more menacing than it ever had before. Shigaraki wanted to respond, but he couldn't. Within was a mixture of emotions. A torrent of fear, rage, hatred, and confusion all at once. It was all aimed at two people. Stain, and the green-haired brat that he obviously was working with for some reason. The hero killer didn't care about this, as he gave Kurogiri a menacing glare. The mist-like villain got the message and immediately began to open a portal in front of the crimson-clad killer. Mordred, we're leaving. The hero killer then said, aiming his words at the shadow soldier. The night-like shadow obeyed the order, letting go of Shigaraki before retreating into the hero killer's shadow. Shigaraki then remained on the floor as Stain slowly walked through the gate without looking back. Later that same night, a calamity struck Hosu City. As darkness fell, the streets got lit up by a different light, that of fire. The city was under attack. Buildings were on fire, and what could only be described as monsters roamed the streets. Pro-heroes gathered to try and control the situation, doing whatever they could to help. 
Izuku was part of this effort and recognized these monsters. They looked like the Nomu that he had fought at the USJ, only these appeared to be a mixture of different shapes and sizes. This alone put the Greenette on high alert, for it meant that the man he feared was somewhere around here. There were other things that bothered him, however. It was that there were people missing. Ida was not with Manuel, the hero he had been interning with, and Todoroki was not with Endeavor for some reason. Izuku was worried by their absence, for he had already had a bad feeling that Ida would do something reckless. He now had reason to think that Todoroki might have been dragged into it as well. Meanwhile, in a different part of the city, the very thing that Izuku feared was happening. Ida had gone after the hero killer to get revenge, only to be penned down immediately. He would have died in that very moment, had it not been for Todoroki arriving. The bicolored teen had heard what happened to Ingenium, and therefore he decided to try and keep an eye on Ida. When he noticed that Ida was missing, he went looking only to end up in this situation. Todoroki had intended to distract Stain and run away with Ida, but that wasn't possible. The blue-haired teen was paralyzed and couldn't move on his own. Same went for the pro that was present. Not only that, Stain wasn't exactly going to let that happen. He tried his best, using both ice and fire, but it wasn't enough. Stain made quick work of Todoroki paralyzing him like he had done with the others. The bicolored teen was lying on the ground, forced to watch as the hero killer slowly made his way over to his classmate. Ida was terrified. He had come there to avenge his dead brother, only to be beaten so easily. He watched as the crimson-clad murderer approached him each step reminding him of the fact that he was going to die. Tears began forming in his eyes as Stain raised his sword over him. The teen closed his eyes, waiting for the inevitable end. That is when he opened his eyes, only to not believe what they were seeing. Stain's sword had been stopped by something, someone that was standing between him and the teen. Its body was covered in armor one that was as black as night itself. Despite the differences, Ida immediately recognized this person. T Tensei! The blue-haired teen uttered, calling the name of his lost brother. The armored individual looked back at him, still holding on to the blade, before giving a nod to the teen. What the hell are you doing, Mordred? Stain growled, while sounding horribly agitated. These words confused Ida, but they also brought his attention to another thing. Tensei wasn't just wearing some dark armor, his entire being was dark. It looked like he was made of darkness, and his lack of response implied that he couldn't speak. Ida could only think of one thing when he saw these details, and he didn't know how to comprehend it. I could ask you the same thing, Stain! A new voice then called out, shocking everyone as it did. They recognized it, so they didn't even need to look at who it was. Last time I checked, our deal never included murdering children, the voice then said as he stepped out of the shadows. Standing before them was Izuku, looking to be quite agitated himself. Stain was pushed back, far away from the teens and hero. Izuku walked up so that the paralyzed were behind his back, not breaking eye contact with Stain. That is when he looked towards Ida before saying, I knew that you were up to no good, but this is a new level. The other pros are on their way, so hopefully this will all be over soon. You're lucky that I sensed that something was happening. With a cold voice, Ida felt shivers run down his spine, so much that he almost forgot about what he just saw. He didn't get to say anything, however, before Stain shouted, So, you betray me now? Was this your plan all along? To lure me out and then hand me to the heroes? With an intense amount of aggression, Izuku was unbothered by this as he coldly responded, no, that was never the plan. Had it been, I wouldn't have said any of that out loud, but I thought that I would give you a chance to escape. These people are off limits. Nothing you say will change that. Neither Ida or Todoroki understood what was going on. Izuku was a hero in training, their classmate and friend. Yet he was speaking to Stain as if they knew each other. He was speaking as if they were accomplices. Not only that, they had a sudden realization. Ingenium had been confirmed to be dead, yet he was standing there as one of Izuku's shadow soldiers. If this really was Ingenium, it could only mean one thing. 
Victoria. Did you? Ida uttered, but was cut off. Izuku had suddenly thrust his arm out, throwing one of his daggers as he did. The others didn't get to fully recover themselves as they saw what Izuku had done. The pro-hero that Stain had tried to kill, Native, had been lying paralyzed next to both of them. But not anymore. In his neck, they could see Izuku's dagger, its blade poking out on the other side. The teens were in shock as they watched the Greenette retrieve his dagger with telekinesis before shouting, Arise! at the corpse. Shortly after, a shadow in the form of the now-dead native rose up before kneeling to its master. Now Ida and Todoroki's suspicions had been confirmed, but they couldn't say anything before Izuku shouted, Mordred, take the newcomer and protect those two! While pointing at the two paralyzed teens, Ida and Todoroki were even more confused now, for Izuku sounded like he was panicking for some reason. What they didn't know, however, was that there was a good reason for this. Stain was showing malicious intent, more than Izuku had ever seen from any other person, more than even the system seemed to be able to handle. That's why the Greenette panicked when he suddenly got a message saying, Morning. Malicious in intent sent from unit. Stain. Emergency quest. Active. Slay the enemy. Within five minutes, failure t to complete this quest w w will result in the player's heart stopping permanently. Thank you all for sticking around, and I hope you enjoyed. Before you leave, we would like to let you know that We the Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right here below in the description, so feel free to check out all the other incredible projects that our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I would like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video, so goodbye, and have a divine day.